Let's uh, check in on some NFL news notes. NFL insider uh, Adam Kaplan here on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. The Eagles and the Browns getting ready tomorrow night. And, Adam, for a team that is coming off of a Super Bowl, it seems that there's a lot of stories happening up there in South Philadelphia. How are you, man? Mike, I am well. I'm out here actually on the West Coast at uh, Chargers Camp. They're hosting the Saints. But getting back to the Eagles, yeah, you know, they had a very quiet offseason of, of player movement and, and issues. It, re- it was very quiet. But, yeah, now you've got a couple of training camp battles that need to be settled. You've got a bunch of players who need to get healthy for week one. So, yeah, there's definitely some storylines, not only for week three, but for the first regular season game at home against the Falcons on Thursday night. No doubt, man. And, uh, obviously, you know, it, it seems to me if – I was looking at the timeline of Carson Wentz that I did not think he would be ready. Then he's running around like a deer out there early in, uh, you know, but he's not cleared. Now it seems that people are kind of, eh, I'm not so sure. What is the feeling starting to be about whether he'll be ready two Thursdays from now? Well, the key would be, and he's going to do this, as I understand it, he's going to split the first team reps with Nick Foles over the next two weeks. you got to get through that and see how he handles the workload. And at some point over the next couple of weeks, he'll be reevaluated by the medical staff, and they'll see where he's at, and they'll make a decision whether he's cleared for contact. That's the key here, Mike. Is as you know, he cannot get quarterbacks cannot get hit in practice. Though today, Drew Brees, Drew Brees got hit today and he fumbled it. Uh, you're not supposed to hit the quarterback, but that's why they wear a red jersey. <laughs> they have to determine whether that surgically repaired left knee is ready for for the workload that it entails as a quarterback. And, you know, he hasn't faced that. But as you said, and you're right, I was shocked at the first or second OTA practice. He took some seven-on-seven reps. I was not told that that was going to happen. And then a couple weeks later, he's running and cutting on the sideline when he wasn't practicing. I'm like, wow, this is really – all I was told at the beginning was he would be on the field in August, the first practice, taking no, no worse than seven-on-seven. Seven. And the first practice in training camp – he took 11 on 11 reps, and of course, for three weeks, he they backed off that, but now he's taking 11 on 11 after training camp. So it's really interesting. I, I would agree with Carson's assessment. It's going to be very close. And I, I want to make this perfectly clear because I keep being asked this. It doesn't matter if they have 50 back of quarterbacks. When, when Carson Wentz is ready to play, he's the starter. There's no debate. It's not like, oh, well, because they have Nick Foles, they don't have to rush him. There's no rushing here. When he's medically clear to play, he's going to be the quarterback. No doubt. Period, end of story. Um, so Carson Wentz decision really comes down to just the doctors and if they clear him, he plays regardless uh, of what happens uh, with Nick Foles, who, you know, he got banged up a little bit, but he'll play tomorrow night. And obviously the Eagles like that situation here, but let me ask you, um, has Nate Sudfeld opened some eyes? Yeah, he's, I get, Mike, it's funny you ask that because I get teased on Twitter. People think I'm in his fan club. No, I, I have, because of the, my relationship with the Eagles, I kind of know how they've developed this quarterback. And Nate Sudfeld, and the, the guy that developed him is now the OC of the Vikings, John Filippo. but the Eagles love Press Taylor, who's now their quarterback's coach. He, he's close to his quarterbacks. He does a really good job. And this kid, Nate Sudfeld, takes after his head coach, Doug Peterson. He's very aggressive with his throws. He's improved his athleticism. That was a major concern when he came out of uh, Indiana as a six-round pick for the Redskins. He's improved in every way. He's got great size. And, Mike, here's another thing. The Eagles have the biggest group of receivers in the National Football League. They have, they have four quarterbacks. Four out of the five are six five or taller. It's crazy. And Sudfeld's one of them at six six. He's got a he's got really good arm strength. If you've been down to training camp, or if you remember that game against Dallas last year, he's got a very good arm. And he's a restricted free agent next year. So, And, and by the way, you saw the game against New England. He played out of his mind in that game. There's good tape on him now. Teams now have access to that tape. So next year, the Eagles are going to have a decision to make when he's a restricted free agent. Mm. What level do they tenor him at? Because if they do, if they don't, if they don't do at least a second round pick, he's gone. You could you, you could bet on that one. That's an interesting uh, uh, possibility coming up. I, I like Nate too. I don't, I'm not in the fan club either, but I, I like what I've seen from him. I thought he made some really big time throws in that second game, laying some things in there. Really good drive. So that'll be an interesting story down the road. How about the latest on the wide receivers? I know you had mentioned the other day something about uh, the surgery, Mac Collins, and maybe that's why he seemingly has not done anything in the preseason. I mean, it hasn't seemed like he has really separated from even a guy like Shelton Gibson, who really struggled last year. So you got some injuries there. They've been holding out Aguilar. What is this wide receiving core? Is it better, deeper than last year? 
Well, Mike, I thought it was. So Jeff Mosher, you know Jeff and Bill Osborne, we do we we just started a podcast together <clears throat> called Inside the Birds. If you check my Twitter, Kaplan NFL, um, you could see it. We've we've linked it. So anyway, I sat on our podcast because I was checking. You know what has happened to Mac Collins? I I thought for sure with Gunter Brewer, his receivers coach at Carolina, who's now the Eagles receivers coach, I thought for sure that Collins would at least have some sort of an advantage. And as you said, Mike, and you're right, he's not really challenged as much as I thought. And I just was checking into a couple things, and I found out that Hollins had off-season surgery for sports hernia. I don't know what month it was, but certainly after the Super Bowl. And maybe that had something to do with it. I'm not sure. But as you know, he's been limited in practice lately. So something's going on here. I don't know. I, I, I'm, that's been one of the biggest surprises, that he has not pushed Mike Wallace harder. And the guy you mentioned, Shelton Gibson, I mean, last year there were people who thought, Gibson should have been on the football team because, as you said, he had an awful training camp in preseason. Couldn't catch anything. West Virginia wide receivers, Mike, as I'm told, they have a limited route tree. They, they come in needing a lot of work, and Gibson needed it. This this spring, he's had a great, great offseason. And Mike Rowe did a great job with Nelson Aguilar, who's now the OC. And Gibson has made this incredible jump. Not only will he be on the football team, he might be dressing every week now because oh. Matt Collins is an outstanding special teams player. Yeah. I think Gibson has a chance, and Mike, if everybody's healthy and playing well, yeah, they're pretty deep here. But remember, Nelson Aguilar right now, uh, early on the season, is a major question mark. I mean, not Nelson Aguilar, I'm sorry, uh, Alshon Jeffrey. Nelson Nelson will be ready for week, I believe. Yeah. But Alshon Jeffrey coming back from significant shoulder surgery, he's a major question mark for the first couple weeks. Well, and Gibson, too, has done well in the return game. I don't know if they're planning on using him there, but uh, he has been excellent in that because – you know, that, that's an area where I don't know that anybody has separated themselves in that role either. So Shelton might be opening some eyes in the special teams return game because how much do they want to really – Sproles, you know, they use him more as a punt return guy, but uh, I don't know that the, the kick return has really been settled yet. Yeah, and Corey, Cle- Corey Clement could do that. i got to tell you, by the way, Darren Sproles, unbelievable what I saw during training camp. I was there, I think, five days. You, you literally could not only – not only could you not tell that he had ACL reconstruction – he looked like he's tw- like like he's 25, not 35. Guys, guys are marvel. I know he already announced he's retiring. He looks like he hasn't lost anything. I mean, he, it's incredible, and the way that the Eagles use him and and it did in the past, he's going to help them probably on punt returns. He's valuable to have, and I'll tell you what, he's uh, the guy's a medical marvel. What he's been able to do to get through this surgery is remarkable. Uh, Adam Kaplan at Kaplan NFL. That uh, podcast inside the birds with Jeff Mosher and uh, Billy Osborne, who, of course, you hear on our show a lot here on the Sports Bash. Slot corner, um, I think that's interesting. Robinson was great. You might have a more talented individual, but it's a different world playing the slot than it is on the outside, Adam. Mike, it is, and I'll tell you, City Jones, I could tell you before the draft last year, no team I spoke to, I must have talked about to 20, 20, 15, 20 teams about City Jones, no team ever mentioned that he could play the slot. And it's a, it's a certain position. Typically, tall corners don't play inside. City Jones at, at 6-6-1, he's shown he could do it. He's got those long arms. And his movement has been good coming off the torn Achilles, I think. But I, I, I don't know long term. Let's put it this for now. He'll see some time in the slot that he's going to be the guy there. I, I don't see that. You know, Ronald Darby is really well from the, the uh, bad ankles injury last year. He had an excellent camp. Jalen Mills, of course, they're five deep at corner. Uh, and actually six if you count Busby. So, it's amazing what this team done for their depth. I mean, you, you look a couple of years ago, bad at receiver, bad at corner. Uh, offensive line, depth was not good. Now they're deep just about everywhere. The only place they're really not super deep is at linebacker. So Michael Kendricks wasn't lying last year. There's more <laughs> talent in that room. He, I don't, you know, look, Michael's now been with the Browns and the Eagles. He could say whatever he wants. And the Browns roster is actually pretty good. Anywhere near the Eagles, but it's, it's good. But Michael, look. The Eagles wanted him, Michael wanted out, and Michael got his wish. He'll play a lot more for the Browns than he did with the Eagles. Uh, you said you're in uh, L.A. with the Chargers, and uh, that's an interesting team. We were talking a lot yesterday about uh, that draft class, you know, Rivers, Manning, Roethlisberger. And how many, uh, you know, does Rivers look like a guy who's still got three, four, five? I mean, how much longer is this guy going to play? At, 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 he was, Maybe he had his best year last year. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm watching him and, and Drew Brees today. I'm just, this is, this is. You know, typically you laugh because the only guys who could play in their late thirties are punters and, and kickers. That not anymore. They're not. Uh, no, they, I think. Look, Tom Brady's forty-one. He just turned forty-one earlier this month. Breeze looks. He's got plenty of time left. So does Philip Rivers. He looks great. 
Uh, they eventually want to get in, Antonio Gates in. Remember, they lost Hunter Henry. Uh, they're, they're third year tight end to it due to a torn ACL. So they, they've got to get, they've got some injuries to get through, but they're going to be good. The Saints, I'll tell you what, the, this is the first year and I don't know how many years. The NFC is so much better on paper, at least, than yeah. the AFC. I've got six teams that I project any of them could make the Super Bowl. Uh, I would agree. We we, we threw out a, a, a litany of them yesterday. This this conference is very deep. And you remember last year, I mean, Green Bay had no Rodgers, so you add him into the mix. Quick, Adam Kaplan's with us on, uh, I don't know if you saw the statement from Troy Vincent on the NFL comp, uh, competition committee. Uh, they met about the helmet stuff. It appears nothing's going to change. No, my, my, it's funny because I, I I've talked to a couple GMs on on uh, my tour about this the the, the helmet rule. Mo, most it's funny coaches differ than front offices. The front offices think that this is totally overblown. There are a lot of coaches. I had one coach in particular told me that this is the most significant rule change that he's seen in his time in the league. This guy's been in the league almost two decades. It's just the adjustment period. You don't know to need to lower your head to make a tackle, but the problem is so many guys have lowered it when they've made tackles. It's a different mindset, and unfortunately, I think the first couple of weeks you're going to see a ton of penalties. And my biggest fear is is that games are going to be slower, Mike. But you know what? This is what the league wanted. And it's all about player safety, and I get it. But it's going to take. There's going to be a major adjustment period here for the players. All right, uh, Adam Kaplan at Kaplan NFL. Uh, check out their podcast with him, Mosher, and uh, Billy Osborne. It's really good stuff. And, of course, Adam Kaplan appeared via the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. Thanks, pal. Thank you.